Hey everybody and welcome to TechFlow for Construction brought to you by Zentech Consultants. TechFlow for Construction is a recurring video cast where we talk about the best tech practices and procedures that we've been implementing for Zentech clients, ones that we think everybody should be looking to include in their own workflows. I am Jim Coppinger, one of the principals here at Zentech Consultants. And today I want to talk to you about standardizing project structures on all of your construction management. Now, look, I understand that, you know, the idea of standardizing your project folders and what's in them and how they're structured, it's really not a new concept, right? For most of us, uh, we probably have something pretty similar to this, right? Some kind of a standardized project folder. We put in the project numbers on our local servers or, or in the cloud or wherever it may be. Um, and that's a good thing. It's a great starting point problem that we run into is that so often we have this set up and it's so rigid that for security purposes, we start to limit access to it, meaning only the people who are working inside the office have access to any of this data, right? Which means we're completely cutting out all the field staff, people who are working remote, traveling, and even in some cases, right, subconsultants who need to have access to the project information it becomes kind of an administrative nightmare to try and work strictly on a server this way. And one of the things that we have been doing here at Zentex is helping people implement and structure these same directory folders for them uh, right inside their construction management system. And I wanna talk about three different systems here that, that you can do this in. I'll show you each of those today. Uh, we're gonna talk about how you can do this inside of Bluebeam Review, which almost all of us have in the construction world. I wanna show you guys how you can do this in Procore. I'm going to show you how we can kind of duplicate the same concept inside of Autodesk Build, right? It doesn't matter which system you're working on. We're trying to focus on workflow processes here that are going to make your daily life easier. And one of the things I do want to point out to people, um, which for some reason doesn't, doesn't always seem to, to click, right? A lot of folks I see have the folder structure built like this. But one of the things that's really important about working with a construction project folder setup like this is not just getting the name folders in place, but it's about putting the default files that you're going to need to work with in those folders prior to beginning the project. So for example, here I got this project form templates. And just to give you an idea, right, I already have uh, standard forms in here for RFIs and invoices in the middle. So it's things that you guys are going to use on 90% of your jobs, right? You need them there. They have to be opened and copied and saved for, you know, dates and times and RFI numbers and so on, all of which is great. But if we have them in there as blank forms, People are always going to know where to find them. They're always going to be accessible, whether it's from their iPhone or their iPads or their, you know, two-in-ones out in the field, whatever the case may be. And that's a real important thing to go in and build out things. One, the one kind of caveat that I will put to that, you don't want to put every possible form that someone might ever need into the project structure. In other words, if the form that you're looking at and considering to put into your project standard isn't used on 90% of the jobs, don't put it there. Create a separate folder on your server or somewhere in the cloud that people can go to, someplace that's easy to access. Uh, but don't put that, you know, the, the files that are once in a while access. Don't put those into the standard files. But the ones that have to be done, like invoices and RFIs and, you know, uh, incident reports, things like that, that are going to happen on every single job, this is the spot to put them so people have the correct default form right there in there. All right, so let's talk about taking this type of project structure, right, and bringing it into our standard form systems. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring, bring up Bluebeam Review. Um, and I know a lot of you guys may think that Review is strictly a PDF markup system, but one of the things that you guys do need to be aware of here in Review is that it's got Bluebeam Studio built directly into it, which is a uh, file hosting and file collaboration site that's part of your license. You already own it. It's completely free. And it comes with unlimited storage. And it makes it really, really easier for you to go in and build yourself out a new project. So you see here, I just have a uh, in studio, I'm logged in. I'm just going to bring in a new construction project. And what's great here is that I can easily go in and I can upload right, entire folder structures all at once. So when you've got that standard company default folder structure that you guys have spent years putting together, you've got it all thought out, I can just go in, upload that folder. I, and I can just go right from here and say, hey, I'm going to upload that project folder structure and just load it up. Right? And then right from there, you see that Bluebeam is going to go in and it's 
just going in and adding all of the necessary folders and subfolders and everything that I have selected in there. Right? See, it's it's uploading everything with all the files already in place. So that now people can access this right from the field, and you can have your field and your office personnel and your subs all working on the same files. And you see that it also brings up for us all of the forms, right, that we had in that subfolder, right? So everything in that aspect is a very simple process of uploading these into the field. We can really recommend this type of concept. Uh, but I'm not trying to push Bluebeam review here today. I'm really talking about the workflow concept. And then I'm really going to jump over and show you guys that when we get into Procore, okay, that in Procore, and a lot of us, you know, who are on the GC side, Procore all set and built, but I can go right into any given project, okay, and I can just go to the documents folder, and you see that up in here, I can do exactly the same thing. I can just go new and do a folder upload, and I can start in the same location. See, I can just go in and say, hey, I, I want to bring in project folder structure and just upload that, right? and it'll go ahead and it will upload that folder structure all the way in, and all of the subfolders and everything else will be built right into that, so that I'm all set here inside of uh, Procore as well, right? So I can easily bring those in. I can do the same thing, not quite as easily, um, in, in Autodesk Build. Uh, the one thing that I think uh, Build and Autodesk needs to work on here a little bit, it's good, is that we can't just do a folder upload at this point. We're kind of limited to uh, bringing up the, the files. So it does mean that we would kind of have to go in here, right? And you see we can only upload files, but I can easily go in and I can add whatever type, you know, under the file section, right? I can easily go in here and I can create whatever kind of new folder structures that I need in here, right? So you see, I can go in here and I can upload files, I can create new subfolders, and I can kind of manually create fo folders here. So I can start with my, you know, adding a subfolder or whatever I need, and then I can go ahead and upload into that subfolder, whatever I call it, right? If I need to do, if I wanted to make one for, you know, the, the, uh, what would you call this? my form setup. Right? Then I can just upload those files. So it's an extra step in doing it through build, and I'm sure they're going to resolve that in, in a, you know, uh, a future upgrade because a lot of folks are working this way, right? And getting this folder structure that you guys already know that your people inside your company already understand and putting this out into the cloud, right? One of the, the other things that's really nice about all of these, whether it's build or Procore or Ruby, right, is that once we've got the files and the folders and the setups in here, we can go into any of these uh, construction management control centers, right? And we can really begin to control user access, right? We can add users. We can create new standardized groups of users for, you know, our internal staff, general users, estimating, you know, construction management. And we can decide who is even available to access any of these files and folders we put in place. And then we can even get to the point where we can go in and we can begin to assign permissions. What are the individual users who are given access to these folders allowed to do, and what are they not allowed to do? Right? And and you know, for a, a good example here, and I can kind of get to this level as well in both uh, Procore and Build. I can also get to the point where I can go in and I can take each of the folders, right? and I can assign specific permissions for different groups, different users to each folder. Even to the point if I want to go in and say, hey, you know what, underneath the, you know, the contracts up here, maybe what I want to do is I want to hide that from certain people, certain groups, and let only the people who work inside my company be able to access and, and see that. When, when you know, someone who isn't part of that list comes in here and they look, the contracts folder won't even show up for them. Right? So we have complete and total control over how we do this and how we display these files right? and give people access to them. And it's a really important concept in modern construction management, right? Um, and one of the other things, just because I have Bluebeam here open on screen, one of the things that's nice about Bluebeam and Procore uh, and, and Build to a certain extent as well, is that the people who are going to be accessing these files don't need to hold licenses of the program themselves. In other words, I have Bluebeam. I'm uploading this project. I'm uploading all this data from my job. I'm the host. Anybody who I invite to the job, they can log in and work on these files and mark them up and read them and do whatever I need them to do within my permission structure. And all they need is the free version of Ruby to do that. Right? I don't
logged into your Procore, same thing, right? Anyone can log into your Procore account and access without any kind of a second or license, right? Those are the kind of concepts and the things that we really work with our clients here at ZTech to help them optimize and streamline what they're doing in terms of their construction management process. And those are the things we're going to be focusing on here in our Tech Flow for Construction series. And I hope you guys will join us for future episodes. Have a great day, everybody.